Welcome back to Math with Ms. Swartz. Today we are going to move on and look at rotation. So, so far, just as a review, we have looked at translations. And those are very much like a slide. So I'm just trying to give you a verb for every type of transformation. And we've looked at reflections. It's like a flip. Flips over a point. Okay. So rotations, the, the verb we're looking for is a turn. Okay. We turn it about an area or it around an axis point or around the center of rotation. So... We're going to look at rotations today. Rotations can be a little bit more tricky just because um, sometimes it's hard to visualize where it should be on the graph. But luckily, we kind of have the easiest rotations that we have to learn today, and we're not focusing too much on other types of rotations. So there's a trick to it, but if you know the trick, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's just talk about rotations. Yes, you have to write this down. So a rotation or turn is the transformation in which a figure is rotated about a point called the center of rotation. So there's always going to be a point where you're rotating around. You can actually rotate around any point. Today we're only going to rotate a, around the origin, which makes life a lot easier. The number of degrees a figure rotates in an angle of rotation is called the angle of rotation. So today we're also only going to rotate 180 80 degrees around the origin, which again makes our life a lot simpler. But a lot of times when we are talking about rotating, you're going to be talking about one of these three options, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360. 360 is going to bring you back to where you started, but you can kind of think of it when we're rotating it in the origin as kind of your quadrants that we talked about. And then you can also rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Now when you're rotating either 180 or 360, these two don't really matter because either way is going to get you to the same spot so it doesn't really matter if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise but if we're talking 90 or 270 you'd have to know which direction you're moving so in a rotation the original figure and its image are going to be congruent you're not making it bigger or smaller you're just turning it and we're going to look at an example of maybe working with a rotation that's not 180 right now, just looking at it and just understanding that you can rotate a figure however many degrees it asks you to. We're just not going to be doing that specifically today. So this puzzle piece, we're rotating it 270 degrees clockwise. Okay, so again, remember, think about in, in, in a quadrant. So if your puzzle piece here was like this, just ignore my terrible drawing. Okay, 270 degrees clockwise, we'll first talk about clockwise, look at a clock, you're going to be moving this way, okay, and you're going to be rotating 270 degrees, and each time you rotate 90, which is going to be in a quadrant, you're going to be turning it on its side, so when you turn it to, to this first one, 90 degrees, you're going to be looking at... this okay and then 180 degrees is going to be across from it and it'll look something like that doing my best here on the puzzle pieces and then if you turn it again
here is what it would look like after 270 degrees even though my picture is not very good so um that is right there c so we can rotate it kind of whatever degrees we would like to or whatever degrees they ask they stick with 90 180 and 270 and 360 for the most part um today like i said already we'll only look at 180 because we kind of just want to get a good handle on what rotations look like and kind of understand what we would be doing in a rotation more so than worried about you know if it's not going around the origin then things get pretty complicated but you will do that later on down the road okay so let's jump into some examples where you're actually rotating in a graph so you need some graph paper so yep you need to write all of these down it says the vertices of a trapezoid are listed rotate the trapezoid 180 degrees about the origin what are the coordinates of the image so we're going to first graph the original figure so we got negative 4 2 it's w i like to make sure that you write the labels with these because it makes your life a little bit easier down the road there's x and Z. Looks like this. Okay, so if we're going to picture this 180 degrees, remember it doesn't matter what direction, we're going to end up in the same quadrant. So if you think about it, 180 degrees, if you were to turn your paper, it doesn't really matter, but 180 degrees, this would be 90 and then this would be 180, okay? Even if you went this way, this would be 90, and this would be 180. So we're gonna end up in quadrant four with our figure. But remember, our figure also rotates, so we have to think about, okay, if I rotate it, what side is it kinda gonna end up on? So if I were to rotate it 90, okay, it would be sitting up kinda something like this. So if I rotated another 90, okay. so then if we rotate it one more down, we would have to believe that it would kind of just be upside down, something like this. So now that we kind of have an idea of where it's going to be located and what it's going to look like, we can do a lot of different things. We can rotate our paper and kind of work from there and do the exact same points in quadrant four as we have in quadrant two there. Or we can learn this little trick. So if we just take all of our ordered pairs and make everything the opposite, okay, we are going to get our new points. So negative four becomes positive four. Two becomes negative two. Negative 3 becomes 3, and 4 becomes negative 4. Negative 1 becomes 1, and 4 becomes negative 4. And negative 1 becomes 1, and 2 becomes negative 2. So let's check this out. Based on the picture that we kind of came up with in our head, if this looks like what we were thinking. So 4, negative 2... 3, negative 4, one negative 4, and 1, negative 2. So is that upside down? Is that kind of what we were thinking? Does look like it. And it is in quadrant four. So there we go. We rotated it 180 degrees around the origin. And I wrote out my points here. This is important. It said, what are the coordinates of the image? So make sure you write those out. It's good to start that way because then you kind of know what to plot. Okay, let's try one more together. So we have a triangle. The vertices are listed, so we're going to plot those. We have four, five. That's Q, 4, 0, that's R, and 1, 0, that's 
towards us. Okay, so there's our triangle. Straight edges aren't working very well. Okay, we want to rotate 180 degrees. So, we're in quadrant 1. If we were to go this way, 90, boom, we'd be here. If we were to go this way, boom, boom. So, we're going to be in quadrant 3. Kind of the same idea. If I flip it this way, the bottom part's going to be here. And then, when we get it 180 degrees, it's going to be upside down is kind of what I want to think there. So, Q prime would be negative 4 negative 5. R is going to be negative 4, 0. We don't have negative 0. And S is going to be negative 1, 0. So let's plot these points. Negative 4, negative 5. That's Q prime. Negative 4, 0. Negative 1, 0. R prime and S prime. There we go. There it is rotated. So again, all I did was switch all of my points to the opposite. Okay, I'm going to have you try this one on your own. And then come show us. So again, just change all your points to your opposite because you're just rotating 180 degrees about the origin. When you're done with that, come get your notes checked. Um, and have a wonderful Monday.